I am so honored to serve as GFWC Wisconsin's 60th president during an unprecedented time in our history. Together, we will overcome challenges and persevere. During our virtual state convention, we had the honor of having GFWC past international president, Mary Ellen Brock, conduct our installation ceremony. I wish to thank Mary Ellen for her time and creativity in making all of our newly installed officers feel so special while honoring the work of the past administration under the leadership of Deb Brossard. Thank you all. Throughout my term as state president, I have chosen mind, body, and spirit as my theme. My administration's lapel pin was designed to promote the importance of being well balanced. And the symbol of the butterfly has a spiritual meaning of rebirth, change, and transformation. I'd like to share a few words about how I came up with the theme of mind, body, and spirit. To quote the great Deepak Chopra, when mind, body, and spirit are in harmony, happiness is the natural result. Let's face it, everyone is in search of happiness. Who doesn't want to be happy? The good news is that happiness can be learned. I found that the more I volunteered to help others in need, the better I felt. And that is exactly what GFWC Club Women do. Our mission is to make our world a better place through volunteer service. I don't know about you, but when I give of time and talent, especially when it comes to my music, I receive back tenfold. If you haven't heard of the law of attraction, meaning what you send out into the universe mirrors back to you, I highly recommend the book, The Secret. I learned a long time ago to seek things in my life that bring me joy. Music, horses, family, nature, the list goes on. I find that when I express gratitude, I feel humbled. When I feel compassion, I am motivated to give. I once took a personality test and guess what trait came up number one? Kindness. And isn't kindness what the world needs most right now? In the middle of a pandemic where violence, looting, and lives are unnecessarily taken. I am a living example of how happiness can be learned. How? By being less selfish, learning and sharing good fortune with those less fortunate, thinking of others, even doing small things for others like opening a door or letting someone go in front of you at the checkout line. Just the other day, my husband Kent, my soulmate, knew I was having a bad day and surprised me with those soft, gushy, delicious glazer donuts from Quick Trip. Now, I didn't eat the whole box, but just that one bite made me flip the switch from a bad day to a good way. It definitely brought a smile to my face. Such a small gesture, yet powerful. These simple things make life happier. Now, I'm not saying we don't have bad days, even depression after we lose a loved one or a pet. Or perhaps you or someone you know is experiencing chronic pain that causes irritability. What I'm saying is that you have a choice. You have a choice to choose happiness. The mind is a powerful thing. Back in 1935, the Dalai Lama said, happiness is not ready-made. It comes from your own actions. Let's talk about the incredible human body. We come in all shapes and sizes. And when I was a little girl, I remember seeing a bronze art exhibit about women and how beautiful each and every woman truly is. Women have a unique power in a good way. And the power dates back to biblical days. Adam was crushed by Eve, the powerful Samson to Delia. David felled a nine foot Goliath, yet fell under the spell of Baalish. Yes, women have power. 
remember just 100 years ago how women stood up and marched for the right to vote. I am so grateful for the women leaders before us. Now they had spirit. The human spirit simply represents each of our souls, our true inner selves who long for peace, harmony, and love for one another. It's probably no surprise that my president's emphasis project is mental health awareness. What if I told you that one in five American adults experience a mental health issue each year? That translates into 20% of our US population. The fact is that mental health problems are actually very common. I myself was raised in a household with mental health issues, so I can totally relate. I learned so much about self-help through recovery principles, and I couldn't be more thankful to my mother for becoming a leader herself of the local recovery chapter in Waukesha, Wisconsin. There are so many myths about mental illness, for instance, one might think that mental illness is a sign of weakness. The truth is, asking for help is a sign of strength. Another myth is that mental illness is an adult problem, when actually, one in six youth between the ages of six and 17 experience a mental health disorder each year. Believe it or not, 50% of all lifetime mental illness begins by age 14 and 75% by age 24. I am so proud to choose mental health awareness as my platform and I invite you to see the GFWC Wisconsin website for more information on how you can help at the district, club and individual level. Through education, my hope is to remove the powerful stigma attached to mental illness by encouraging those who are struggling, admiring the survivors of mental illness, honoring the taken through suicide, and never giving up hope. Allow me to spend just a few minutes on my vision for GFWC Wisconsin. I've identified five key issues facing our organization today. Many of you will relate and say, yes, we need to address that in our own club. Now, my hope is that my goals and objectives will unify our members in their community service efforts and foster the development of leadership skills and most important, cultivate lasting friendships among us, our GFWC sisters. The first issue is membership. We need to recruit new members, focusing on recruiting the younger working women to carry on the legacy of our clubs. In addition, my hope is to increase attendance at our workshops and conventions. The second goal is to establish a committee to get us up to speed with the ever-changing area of technology. Who would have thought that we'd be creating videos to reach our membership during a worldwide pandemic? Yet here we are, hosting our very first virtual state convention. The third area is to educate the membership on our new community service programs that our GFWC headquarters has unveiled. Even though change can be difficult, I am confident we can incorporate these new community service programs into our club reporting. My fourth goal is to encourage our leaders to attend our state convention with procedural manuals to ensure a smooth and successful transition of our officers and chairmen. And finally, the fifth area pertains to public awareness. We need to work hard to raise awareness of GFWC Wisconsin and Wisconsin's own library through increased communication and education. Be sure to watch for our GFWC Wisconsin logo shirts and other items we will be offering for sale as a fundraiser to help promote our brand identity to encourage unity and name recognition. 
Clearly, these five goals will take effort to complete. But with your help, we can get them accomplished by 2022. But I can't do it alone. I will need your help. I'd like to share a quick story with you about a woman who wanted to climb a mountain. There was a woman who lived near the base of a mountain. Every day she looked at that mountain and had a dream to reach the top. She had always wanted to climb that mountain and the day had finally come to start her journey. At the foot of the mountain, she met a traveler and she asked him, how did you get up the mountain? And what did you see from the top? The traveler shared his story and the woman thought to herself, it sounded exhausting. She needed to find another way to climb. So she continued on her journey and met a second traveler and asked him, how did you climb up the mountain? And what did you see from the top? The traveler shared his story in great detail. Still not being convinced of the right direction and which way to go, the woman asked 30 more travelers. When she finished talking to them, she finally made up her mind. Now that so many people already shared their paths, and especially what they saw from the top, she no longer needed to climb the mountain. She had gathered all the information she needed. Now it is unfortunate that the woman never climbed to the peak. But you see, each individual needs to find the most suitable way to climb that mountain. Each of you have your own journey to take, one step at a time to make your dreams come true. My hope for you is that you take that challenge to climb your own mountain to happiness, giving you the perfect balance of mind, body, and spirit. Because with faith, all things are possible. Many people have searched for how to achieve a more happy and fulfilled life. In the book, Blue Zone of Happiness by Dan Butner. Studies have proven that it all boiled down to just two things. No, it's not money. It's not fame. Happiness comes first by belonging to a community, whether it's your church, your workplace, your extended family, or an organization such as your own women's club. The second key to happiness is to be surrounded by the love of your family. May you find joy, purpose, and satisfaction in everything you do. In closing, I am honored to be entrusted with the presidency of GFWC Wisconsin and promise to fulfill the duties of this office and represent you well. Please know that I am grateful for each of you and appreciate your service in your communities. Now, more than ever, it is important to connect, help each other, listen, collaborate, and heal. God bless you all.